In this video, we're going to continue talking about our Palo Alto security profiles. Now, we previously talked about setting up a couple of different profiles specifically for URL filtering and for antivirus. And we saw how easy those were to be able to set up. Once we, once we had the item licensed and we knew exactly where to go, uh, setting them up was actually pretty darn simple. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the other security profiles that we might be seeing along the way. Uh, what I mean is, well, we already talked about our antivirus. Uh, antivirus was great. It looks at viruses as they go through our network and then blocks them before they reach our environment. Additionally, we saw URL filtering about how we're able to block specific websites, not so much based on the website, but based on the classification of the website. Uh, you know, some classifications we want in our company, some we don't. Along with those two, there's also anti-spyware. How do we keep spyware out of our environment? It's similar to antivirus, but not quite. Uh, what about file blocking? How do we block specific types of files from being downloaded that might be spyware or might be antivirus, but haven't quite yet been identified? And then also, how do we check for vulnerability protection? How do we make sure that, uh, that our systems are working properly uh, against various vulnerabilities that are out there? Well, just like with all of the other profiles, these are normally all licensed features uh, and require updated data files in order for them to work. Uh, in order to set them up, we create profiles and then attach them to security policies. And last but not least, since we're talking about having so many different profiles in here, we may want to create some profile groups that helps make management of them easier. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. Here we have our Palo Alto environment. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right in in order to set up those profiles. Uh, as you've probably seen from my prior videos talking about AV and URL filtering, the profiles are here under objects and then all the way down here under security profiles. Uh, we've gone ahead and we've set up antivirus. We cloned our default policy and created a new one. Uh, we have gone ahead and set up URL filtering, same thing, cloned the default and created a new one and then customized it as appropriate. Anti-spyware, well, we can do basically the same thing. There are, in this case, two default options for us. There's a default and a strict and best practice, choose one of these and clone it. And then we'll go ahead and quickly modify it in order to name it. We call this uh, default internet and we can see here that for anti-spyware basic what it does is it has a couple of different rules for instance right here is called simple critical it will look against any threat in any category and do whatever its default action is as long as the severity is critical so all of these threats have different default actions applied to them or assigned to them and it says yes make uh, if they're critical, go ahead and do that default action. If we want, we can also specify right here, go ahead and do a packet capture, either one packet, which is just enough for us to be able to identify what's going on, or the extended capture, which should capture a larger conversation. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose extended. Since this is for critical, I will go ahead and include that in there. There's then additional policies for high, medium, and low. Uh, and so on. Uh, we can do exceptions. So if there's specific items that are popping up as anti-spyware, but we know that they're not, we can add in those exceptions. Uh, and then same thing with DNS signatures, how we can handle the DNS activities around that spyware. Go ahead and say, okay, we've now got that. Vulnerability protection, same thing. There's a couple of different policies here. I'll copy the default. Just as an example, call this our default internet policy. And same basic thing. This looks at the various threats that are in our in an environment and looks at the uh, criticality of them. Uh, 
uh, different actions and whether packets should be captured or not. So I'll go ahead and say extended pack capture simply because that's a critical. Uh, you can also see that's a client policy versus a server policy. Uh, so uh, you can have different policies depending on where the traffic is going. Uh, URL filtering, we already talked about that. File blocking, uh, let's go ahead and we'll just clone the basic file blocking. Default internet access. And we can see here that it goes ahead and it blocks certain high risk types of files. Doesn't matter which application is downloading it. If it sees a .exe or a DLL or a .chm uh, or .rar file, it will block those files from being accessed in our environment. Uh, there's others that will encrypt, but will still allow it. And then still others that simply log whenever those uh, events are occurring. Uh, is that all of them that I wanted to talk about? Uh, vulnerability, file blocking, antivirus, anti-spyware, view vulnerability, URL, and file blocking. Yes, that was all of it. Uh, wildfire data and DOS we will actually talk about at a later date. So I've got all of these guys and what we manage these exactly the same way as what we've been doing previously. We go back to policies. We identify the pol the security policy that we want to apply those to. Select that. And then under the actions pane, go ahead and identify our policies right here. Now, as you can imagine, this can start to become a little tedious uh, identifying each and every single one of these, especially in a situation where you may have a consistent policy that you want applied or consistent set of policies you want applied to a lot of different environments. Uh, and what I mean by that is right here, we have just simply one zone called private. Uh, okay. Uh, one zone called private and so what that means is it's simply just allowing that one zone to go through uh, maybe we have more than just this one zone maybe we have more than private maybe we have desktop one maybe we have virtual machines uh, one maybe we have you know, desktop two uh, Wi-Fi uh, and then guest Wi-Fi Uh, test labs and so on uh, So we have a lot of different labs a lot of different desktop environments and we want the same policies and profiles to apply to all of those Now if I have to specify five or six different items for each and every single one of those profiles I can almost guarantee I'm going to get them wrong. I'm gonna mess up somewhere along the way so what I might want to do is instead of in assigning individual profiles, I can assign a group. And to that group, I can assign all of those profiles and then just assign the group to my different security rules. And this is how we do that. Uh, we come back to objects. And right below our security profiles, if we shorten that right up, we see there's an item right there, security profile groups. And it's just this simple. Let's go ahead and create a new security profile group and we'll call this again, default internet. Because in theory, we want everybody who accesses the internet to have this default policy applied to them. From there, we go ahead and we specify exactly which profiles we want. And then say, okay. We then go back to our security policy and instead of having all of these policies identified uh, under the profile setting, what we do is we change profile from profiles to group. And then we have a group name called default internet. And there we go. We have one profile group that is set up in one place that has all the profiles that I want. If I need to change some of those profiles later, I change them in the group or I change which ones are assigned to the group and then that changes that for 
all of the profiles, sorry, all of the security policies that utilize those groups. Go ahead and commit. And we're golden. We've got our security profiles all already committed there. Uh, if we scroll all the way over here to the right, uh, our profile now shows that it is a profile group instead of a our five individual profiles instead.